Aside from the fundamental physical qualities I just outlined, there are a few daytime AMM events which, in my opinion, dramatically illustrate the mind-bending nature of the phenomenon, with some of them touching on the deepest realms of human psyche. The following is a collection of the most outstanding and insightful AMM events that I've experienced. This event occurred early in my contact practice. I stepped outside and looked directly up above my position and immediately observed a multitude of balloons materializing as they spiraled downward directly over me as though they were caught in a wind vortex. As I gazed up I could faintly make out that they were materializing one after the other from very high up in the clouds. The image pictured here is my attempt to artistically recreate the animation of this event as I witnessed it from the beginning. When I saw this, I was startled and I started scrambling to get my camera together. Moments later, once I was able to turn the camera on and get it in focus, a total of six balloons had fanned out and were now holding stationary positions across the sky. I regret not being prepared to have captured the entire event with their spiral descent. This event felt like a choreographed performance that was tailor-made for me to witness. The angelic grandeur of their entrance made for one of the most thrilling events of AMM that I've had. For this event, I had better timing with the camera in what turned out to be one of the more bizarre coincidences connected to an AMM. I had just walked out of my house in the late afternoon, and as soon as I looked up, my eyes fixed on a big jet high up in the sky. But then something else caught my eye. It wasn't so clear to my naked eye before I turned on my camera, but I could see a small dark object towards the tail end of the jet. Right away, I wondered if it was a UAP following the plane. As I zoomed in with my camera, it became clear that this was a small military aircraft escorting the jet. I quickly put together that this jet was Air Force One, which I later confirmed by a newspaper article reporting on its departure from South Florida that afternoon. As I continued to follow the two aircraft and was thinking how odd this coincidence should happen, a shiny anomaloon appeared directly in the path of the two planes. The escort actually moved out of formation, apparently to avoid contact with the object.
I proceeded to break my visual focus on the planes and hold it on the object. I can only wonder what the pilot's interpretation of the object was. Was this timing coincidence the catalyst for the sighting? After all, I was outside for the purpose of an AMM, but had yet to start my contact process when this occurred. The detail I want those watching to note here is the excitement I was feeling as the event began to unfold. That excitement and the accompanying heightened awareness are factors that have been present on several occasions coinciding with AMM. So I mark this as an incidental appearance. And I'm not completely sure about this, but I think I've produced here the only civilian footage of a UAP in very close proximity to Air Force One. Why should I be so lucky? Was it just mere coincidence? One afternoon, after having been outside trying to connect for maybe 20 minutes without an appearance, I went inside to lay down for a nap. There's a window next to my bed, and if I look out while lying down, angled upwards, I can see two power lines against the sky. On this occasion, I turned my head and saw a single bird on the wire. In my mind, I said to the bird, Greetings, and suddenly I was hyper-focused on this bird as it turned its head towards me, flew off the wire in a dive-bomb manner, directly towards my window, and at about halfway between the wire and my window, it stopped mid-flight using a wing flutter action and then rapidly flipped over to make a very swift and sharp turn off to the right and out of sight. The way that bird flipped out of view was so fast that my eyes were still fixed on the spot in the sky where it had halted and there, in that precise spot, was a shiny object. Not a little to the left or to the right, spot on the exact point of focus of my eyes, the anomaloon appeared. The entire event, which lasted about 10 seconds or so, felt magically sequenced as it was taking place. From the moment the bird turned its head, as if deliberately responding to my greeting, I had that excitement feeling, I'll call it an energetic pulse, that something was happening and about to happen. In the final analysis of this event, my sense is the bird had become a co-meta object in a triangulation with myself and the corresponding anomaloon and, on a deeper level, that my mind, noticing and feeling excitement, was playing an intricate role in the orchestration of the components that made up this AMM. Myrene and I made a trip to New Mexico in 2018. On one occasion, we just got in the car and were about to pull out of a parking lot when I noticed a dust devil forming, so I quickly rolled up the windows to avoid the dust. As the window was going up, my eyes stayed fixed on the whirlwind, which was quickly forming and moving across the lot towards the building. I noticed a very odd sparkling quality in the whirlwind. My eyes were drawn in and I was feeling an energetic pulse as I observed the debris at ground level starting to swirl in this wind. I looked up and there were several white glistening objects sitting high in the sky overhead. Could this have been the debris that I had just witnessed simply being picked up by the whirlwind? That would be the likely explanation. This is where the witnessing becomes tricky though. One could easily insist that these were, in fact, just the debris of the whirlwind, but the odd thing, and I'm no expert here, was that the whirlwind at ground level was small and moved quickly away as opposed to being a high pillar whirlwind, which extend up into the sky and look more like tornadoes. And usually, one can see all manner of debris swept up into these types of whirlwinds. Not to mention, the objects were stationary not in a circular motion that one would expect to see from objects being suspended in a vortex. And they remained that way in place for about five to seven minutes. Could this have been a teleportation of the lightweight objects, paper and plastic bags, I had just observed spinning rapidly at ground level? Was this entire event signifying the connection to the sky phenomena? I had to file this occasion under definite maybe, I realized that this might not have been an AMM event, but I mention it to acknowledge that false sightings are always possible and that critical thinking and keen observation is always a good thing for a researcher, though this phenomena can easily confuse and render those mental tools useless. 
At the end of the day, I realize after having been on this AMM journey for a while, that I will never again in my life be able to identify a lightweight airborne object in the sky as an occasion of basic physics. Never again will I be certain that an airborne balloon or plastic bag is just a stray object made afloat in the usual manner. In 2018, I was one of the organizers and speakers at the Free Experiencer Conference in Miami. Needless to say, my senses were heightened the entire day since the speakers were all major experiencers with amazing stories to tell. At one point, I wanted to go outside for a little break, and again, that heightened feeling was already with me, so I looked upward as I walked out through the doorway of the hall. There it was, a single odd-shaped balloon drifting slowly directly overhead. I remember getting so excited like a crazy man. My only camera was already in use inside the venue, and no one was close by to call their attention, so in a huff, I turned around thinking to run back inside to alert someone when, at that moment, one of the conference speakers came out. I hustled her to my position, and she was able to get this footage on her phone. The anomaloon had coursed over me in the breeze and came to a halt just over a tree line in the near distance. I then sighted a second one, which materialized in the same tree line vicinity, yet had not accompanied the first balloon on its path. Then, for a fleeting moment, another smaller object emanated in the same spot and then was gone. The really interesting detail about this AMM is that another conference attendee walked over to see what we were checking out and let us know with certainty that it, singular, was just a balloon and he had seen it moving over him moments earlier from the back side of the building. Little did he know that I had witnessed this synchronization effect before. To illustrate the synchronization, I put things together here according to his words. That the meta object, with a traveling lead, can synchronize its position in the sky with the moment one fixes their view to said position. For example, you are indoors and you think to go outside, so you get up. Meta object appears in the distance outside. You walk towards the exit. Meta object is coursing towards your position. You exit and look up. Meta object is right where you look, yet is on the move. A similar example occurred when I was editing footage from a fellow Anomaloon experiencer in New York City. He was demonstrating a psi technique of cloud busting. He briefly explained the process, then proceeded to take a deep breath with his eyes closed. After a few seconds when he opened them and exhaled, you can hear the exhale in the original clip, a balloon was right in frame, going across the small cloud he had been focused on. What he and I had not noticed until I zoomed in the footage was that the balloon could be tracked from a position moving towards his view spot about a half a minute before he had begun his breathing process. This is significant because it shows how, with this phenomena, it is easy to overlook details and draw erroneous conclusions. In this case, it would be the assumption that the breathing technique was causal in the AMM when the footage reveals the manifestation to have occurred prior to his process and with the same synchronizing dynamic that occurred at the Miami conference. This was an amazing event that happened in parts over a five-year period. In 2014, three years before my first contact event, I was driving to a friend's house in North Miami. I was on a street close to his place that had a bus stop to my right. As I drove by the bus stop, I noticed a man sitting and looking up at the sky in an angle over my car. Naturally curious, I looked out of my driver's window to see what he was looking at and noticed a shiny stationary object in the sky approximately 500 feet above the ground. I pulled over into a small parking lot that was a block ahead and observed this object for a few minutes. I had no idea what it was and wondered was it some kind of new police drone technology? How could it just be sitting there like that? Maybe it's a UFO. This was pretty interesting but I let it go after a little while. Fast forward three years to 2017. 
After several months of ongoing Anomaloon contact activity, I was driving in the same area a few streets over from the street I was on in 2014, heading in the same direction. I reached the same cross street, and as I proceeded forward, again there was a bus stop to my right with a man sitting and looking up in the sky at an angle over my car. The very second I saw him, my heart started to race and my thoughts scrambled. I absolutely knew exactly what he was looking at before I turned my head to confirm it. It was a shiny stationary object in the sky. After analyzing these events, here's what I came up with. In the 2017 bus stop replay, the entity orchestrated an actualized deja vu involving both men sitting at the bus stop and me as the observer, where the two moments in time were a similitude despite being three years apart. What caught my attention was that the entity was able to access my memories, including the most scant details, through a deep psychic symbiotic connection with me, then aligned with the scenario of a man at a bus stop who it could psychically nudge to look up moments before I was approaching in my car. This occurrence that so closely resembled the 2014 bus stop sighting taught me that this entity can manifest actualized deja vu scenarios based on cumulative artifacts from my memories. Considering these points, I'd have to say this event was one of the most mind-blowing that I've experienced. There's a third part to this. Fast forwarding again to 2019, this happened immediately after I had been speaking with someone about the phenomena. I was driving in the same area of the city when I noticed some men standing together on the sidewalk looking and pointing up. I thought that they were looking at you-know-who, so excitedly I pulled over a few paces ahead of them and had to step out of my car to see what they were pointing at because it was a view that was blocked by my car's roof. I was certain that it was the shiny anomaloon that they were fixed on, but I was wrong. After reviewing this carefully later on, I might have known that I was getting ahead of myself in my guess because the circumstances were not quite close enough to match the bus stop events. Still, because of the obvious similarities, I was fully engaged. It turns out what these men were looking at was a hawk, circling low above them. I was wrong about it being an AMM, yet this hawk made the event feel to me like I was somehow right. With a couple of circles, the hawk had moved off, and by now, having those three pulses in my energy field, I was buzzing. I looked into that same position in the sky over the men, which was now clear. Impulsively, I just started walking towards them as I looked up and said in my mind, I know you're there too. Come join us, my friends, so I can share this moment with these ones. Right then, two very high-altitude twinkling emanations, one bluish, the other silvery, appeared right where my eyes were fixed in the place in the sky, just a few paces before I reached the men. It made me think I was kind of like magician David Blaine's bad magician character during his card guessing tricks, where he guesses wrong but surprisingly turns out to be right, though with an interesting twist. Excuse me, hello, I was driving by and I saw you all pointing up at that bird. They were looking at me a little funny like, yeah? I said, did you also see those? and I pointed up to the sky. After several exclamations of what the f is that, the attention of these guys became transfixed as I explained the situation. We spoke for at least 10 minutes and the whole time that we spoke, one anomaloon remained stationary. The other, which was right next to it, had moved slowly from one side, crossing to the other and then a little further away. I proceeded to connect with these men in conversation about AMMs and assured them that this was no ordinary event. They agreed, and that they should remember this event and stay curious. By the feeling I was getting from a couple of them, I imagined that this experience had an impact. So although this event did not play out exactly like the bus stop events, it was clear to me that there was a connection, albeit from a slightly different set of joint factors. Note the energetic pulses that occurred as the event transpired, showing how the human psyche, specifically excited moments of sensing high strangeness, plays an integral role in these manifestations. However, if we view the two bus stop events and this one as connected, the line between cause and effect becomes more difficult to ascertain. 
In one interpretation, these joint events are integrated with memory patterns. The other interpretation involves the in-the-moment energy pulses. In any case, human consciousness remains the central element. This series of interconnected events was key for me, letting me know without any doubt that psychism in the form of inconceivable time-space sync processes was indeed a factor of AMM. Now, a reality that includes odd experiences happening in nonlinear time or in a psycho-synchronistic manner have been difficult for me to wrap my head around. It's a conundrum that leads me to the idea that even what we perceive as profound abilities of these aerial meta-objects, as described in the above examples, may be a misinterpretation due to our lack of knowledge about consciousness itself. It may just be that they have no abilities or substance without us. Most of this documentary details my experiences with daytime AMMs, but here I include my evening experience of AMM starships. I call them starships because they resemble moving stars and sometimes even look similar to shooting stars. I'm not assuming this to be a disguise, just a resemblance. I'd like to also clarify that I'm not saying they are piloted craft or that they come from other star systems. They could be, I just don't know. Unlike the daytime AMMs, they have shown up in ways that indicate some kind of strong propulsion, intelligent formation, odd maneuvering, intense brightening, and light streaks, which sometimes make bold zigzag patterns. I've heard other experiencers describe these zigzag maneuvers as well. The most visually spectacular example of their formation display for me was a tight line array of 10 or so of these emanations, side by side, practically touching, moving very fast across the sky, then slowing as they scattered outward, faded and disappeared. Seconds later, another group, not in a straight line side by side, but in a cluster on the same path behind the first, also slowing and disappearing as they scattered. A rare and truly awesome spectacle, and I had the feeling that I was getting a private air show that was meant to dazzle me, the spectator. By the way, this was a classic incidental eavesdropper AMM event while I was on the phone discussing some ideas of high strangeness. Many people, including some who engage in CE5 protocols, see these star-like emanations and assume they are satellites. Going by this one and other unique starship shows I've witnessed, I came to understand that whatever the singular star emanations I observed so many times are, they definitely are not satellites. My question about these star-like emanations, which is unanswerable at this point, is whether they are directly related to the daytime anomalies. I suspect they are simply because though they look completely different, a few of the qualities of the starships are similar to the daytime meta objects. One nighttime event occurred following the first Miami conference in October 2018. I had caught the flu and wasn't feeling well. I was thinking about the conference, particularly the presentation given by Dr. Joseph Burks, who is one of the modern day pioneers of human initiated contact and a former cohort of Dr. Stephen Greer's. He related a contact event experiment he had conducted in the early 90s, documenting himself asking for and receiving affirmative flashes from what he referred to as nocturnal lights. His presentation was really impactful for me and inspired me to go outside and try to communicate a request for a healing. I had all of the typical symptoms, headache, scratchy throat, fever, and it was hitting hard. So I figured, why not try? Looking up in the night sky, I asked, if you can heal me, please flash once. Boom, a flash. Well, needless to say, my heart started to pound, and so again, Following Dr. Burke's example, I asked for a confirmation flash, just to be sure, and again another immediate flash came. That call and response was so mind-blowing to me that I hadn't noticed till moments later that my symptoms seemed to have greatly subsided. I wasn't totally restored to normal, but I definitely felt a relief. Was this experience merely psychosomatic? Maybe but it could also have been integrally psychosomatic, presuming some level of involvement from the sky entity. 
This raises the happy prospect that they exhibit benevolent intentions, are able to understand our needs, and can positively affect our physiology. During the production of this documentary, I was with a friend and we had just previewed the first section I had finished. I was talking about the psychic element of AMM. She moved to the floor near where I was seated to reach for something. She now had a view and was gazing out the window behind me as she listened to my words. I noticed her starting to smile and her eyes getting wider as I spoke. I stopped mid-sentence and turned around to look. There was a shimmering object in the sky, right where she was gazing moving towards our direction. We went outside and watched as this flat, round, reflective object was paddle-wheeling through the sky high up over us. Okay, I have to sit with this, she said with a smile. I find a similarity between this event with my friend and eavesdropper phone events, the common denominator being a conversation about some relatable aspect of this phenomenon that causes an AMM occurrence. Also, in this event, again, we find a synchronized coordination of the situational elements in real time. A couple of hours later, once she had left, I went out filled with excitement about this shared experience. Within two or three minutes, as I looked up, giving thanks, another meta-object appeared, way up in the clouds, a whitish stationary anomaly, just the same as it ever was. This footage is featured from a videographer out of Poland. It speaks for itself, but the significant thing to note with this event is that we can confirm these are not holographic images by the fact of a physical being, in this case some birds, making physical contact with the anomaly. Short of an anomaly floating down and allowing us to handle it, this is the strongest evidence we have to prove that these anomalies are in fact solid physical objects possibly related phenomenologically to apports. Another very interesting video came out of Scotland, taken from a drone at high altitude. Watch as the anomaly approaches the drone, then appears to meander in close proximity to it. The text is taken from the video info. The host relates his impression that the object looked like it was alive, noting that its strings appeared as tentacles and that it resembled a jellyfish. An excellent video capture of an AMM and an interesting commentary that speaks to the concept of the living UFO. Early on in my journey, I became obsessed with surfing the web for as much information as I could find. A Google search of weird balloons in history yielded a few interesting surprises. First, I found a 1956 short film directed by Albert Lamoris entitled The Red Balloon, the story of a young boy who finds a balloon and later discovers that it has a mind of its own. Interestingly, the climax also contained deeper spiritual overtones. Here's an entry about it from Wikipedia. The cluster balloon ride in the closing scene could also be said to represent a religious or spiritual analogy. For example, when the balloon is destroyed, its spirit lives on as it is transferred to all the other balloons in the city, 
which is said to be a metaphor for Christ. Themes of self-realization and loneliness are also present in the film. The theme of innocence is persistent and is one of the main focuses of the film. Through a child's gaze, a cynical world is transformed into an almost magical one, highlighting the power of the innocence and imagination of children. Parts of this description resonated profoundly with me due to the unique quality of my events, as I too noted the self-realization and imaginal aspects of the anomaloon phenomenon. Could the author of The Red Balloon have had his own psychic balloon experience, which inspired his film? I can only speculate, but one might consider the absence of a testimony to be a calculated omission for the sake of avoiding embarrassment or threat to his career. Beginning in the early 1950s, the Aerial Phenomena Research Organization, or APRO, was the first civilian research group in the United States that investigated UFOs. I found this entry in their newspaper publication dated from 1958. On July 7th, at 10.30 a.m., several girls traveling on a ferry boat, which was crossing Guanabanara Bay between the cities Rio de Janeiro and Niteroi, saw what appeared to be a weather balloon high in the sky. It was some kind of silvery sphere, larger than a basketball, hovering motionless at an elevation of 70 degrees in a northeast direction. This object was aluminum in color, and its polished surface reflected the sunlight like a mirror. A strong wind was blowing from a westerly direction over the bay, and the rapid motion of a few clouds scattered in the blue sky showed them that there was a high-altitude wind, too. But the ball-shaped object remained motionless for a very long time, despite the wind. It was still in the same position when the ferry boat arrived in Niteroi, and the observers lost interest in it. Afterward, one of the girls told me that, whatever it was, it was not a weather balloon. No balloon could remain absolutely stationary in the sky against the wind. The interesting thing about this reported event, besides its similarity to the anomaly events that I've experienced, is the date of this reporting, 1958, which may show that this phenomena goes back at least 70 plus years. Here's the account of one man's strange encounter with a balloon. It's from a blog post entitled Close Encounters of the Mylar Kind which details a story of a guy who wakes up one morning to discover a balloon floating around his apartment which says, you're special on it. Once he rules out any person who could have brought this balloon into his home, he describes an almost impossible track the balloon would have had to have followed to get inside his apartment. He takes note that it looked a bit deflated and that its ribbon looked frayed, a common quality observed with anomaloons and that it was hovering and also moving in an apparently intelligent way around his apartment. In a tongue-in-cheek manner, he muses that the only explanation was that it was being piloted by extraterrestrials. Space critters have come to visit me today from planet Kololoi in their Mylar space copter, and they want me to know that I am special. Aside from this being such a fun story, it's also incredible. The prospect that this is actually an anomaloon so up close and personal. Just amazing. The truth of this event may be even stranger than the author could have imagined. Some of you watching this are probably thinking now that Dave obviously had someone prank him with the balloon. I mean, let's be real, this was a balloon, nothing more, nothing less. And as we all know, regular balloons don't behave as metaphysical objects. What I'm saying is we can distinguish between mylar helium balloons right in front of us and metaphysical skyborne anomaloons, right? This next story of two girls from England might cause some head scratching over this because it hinges on the device that set everything in motion. An intelligently controlled, multidimensionally oriented, everyday ordinary party balloon. When 10-year-old Laura Buxton of Staffordshire, England, whimsically set free a balloon and watched it sail away, she had no idea she was about to transform her life forever. In 2001, on a small farm in Staffordshire, England, 
a 10-year-old girl named Laura Buxton, sets off a balloon with a note attached. Please return to Laura Buxton, along with her address, so that when it reached a position 140 miles south, it landed at the home of a different girl, also named Laura Buxton, who was also 10 years old. The two girls connected, and as it happened, some of their unique physical features were the same. They both had three-year-old female black labs, gray rabbits, even guinea pigs with identical markings. Upon meeting for the first time, they wore identical outfits, pink sweaters and jeans. All the details of this uncanny connection were verified by their parents. So here, along with the impossible odds and incredibly synchronistic details of this mind-bending story, it seems as though we have a confirmed metaphysical process being used to control a regular balloon. The details of their story are somewhat reminiscent to me of the bus stop events that I experienced, specifically in the similar, extremely unlikely doubling of physical elements that occurred in both situations. These last two close encounter events of Dave's apartment and the two Lauras further illustrate the range of possibility and absolutely incomprehensible metaphenomena connected to AMMs. So what are they? AMMs have inspired researchers and enthusiasts to form colorful explanations that run the gamut. And given the extremely baffling nature of this phenomenon, I can't say that they're all unreasonable. Still, I don't know any AMM researchers who agree with me that these things are hyperdimensional, inanimate objects that are neither craft nor creatures. Robert Bingham, the man responsible for me starting my practice, and who I did speak to at one point, has a take that involves extraterrestrials and claims to know their identity, whether they be good or bad, based off of the shape and color of anomalous. I believe that he has good intentions, but frankly his view annoys me as I know mine may do him the same. But I say this simply because my hundreds of experiences have indicated no such thing. Intuition has been a supreme guide for me in life. I have extended the exercise of this faculty broadly in my AMM practice. I admit that in some regard this is a bold trust in intuition. After all, I really don't know with certainty who or what I am connected to nor can I tell what aspect of myself is being detected. There are many unknowns, and a cautious approach to this phenomenon is not unwarranted. Still, the adventure and bliss I feel with each event keeps me coming back for more, even if it always seems to be more of the same. I'm glad to say, as far as I can tell, the repeated practice has been measurably transformative for me in a good way. Maybe the un-UFO shouldn't be taken too seriously, for they may have no other purpose than to play. Perhaps it has a quality that we might consider to be an immature personality, possessing a fundamental metaphysical nature with behavior similar to a human child. Or perhaps they are not beings at all, but are simply reflecting something within or about each of us, benign psychodynamic impressions that manifest through some long-forgotten fundamental ability of our minds. It may be difficult to even consider the possibility that some level of fundamental symbiosis with a superconsciousness exists, especially for those who cherish the notion of human autonomy and free will. However, as our knowledge of advanced intelligences becomes more solidified, this prospect is unavoidable. Hopefully, researching the AMM phenomenon can help disarm our fears and advance us to the degree that acceptance of the unfathomable can turn inward into greater self-realization. I don't think of AMM as an escapist tool, though the experience has been a timely diversion from the worthless distraction mill we're all being subjected to, at a moment when life on this planet hangs in a precarious balance. In my opinion, what will serve humanity now is to become sensitive sponges, feeling and observing time, space, and interrelationships in creative, open ways, with clear intention to be renewed as we discover the dynamic potential in every being. A transformative adaptation, if you will, into becoming cosmosapien. Engaging with AMM may not be for everyone. 
Still, to me, the great vision and purpose for it today is a hopeful one. World transformation into something much better than the present version. You don't need to be spiritual at all to sense the urgency of this time. It's abundantly clear. It's also clear that part of the psychology that drives the enthusiasm for ET contact is based on hope for some sort of intervention or contact which initiates a planetary paradigm shift. Seeing the level of distress that the world is now under, this AMM process for me has been a kind of Hail Mary effort to help establish planetary transformation as all political and social options, along with time, are quickly evaporating. I've chosen to invest in an organic journey of discovery in an attempt to understand the possible meaning from these experiences. My ultimate goal as an experiencer and researcher is to examine and communicate how the phenomenon is a useful part of humanity's greatly needed self-awareness process at this time. Once again, I'm acknowledging here that my presentation is that of a novice researcher and falls far short of coming up with the big answers. As I said in the beginning, I've only scratched the surface of this mystery. I've intentionally utilized a somewhat conservative approach in my investigation, partly just to maintain my sanity. I could have presented many possibilities regarding how this phenomenon might work, citing metaphysical scholars like Schrodinger, Steiner, Jung, and McKenna, and others. I could ponder about timelines, bloodlines, ley lines could ruminate on how all the paranormal experience modalities, whether they be past life reincarnations, near-death experiences, ghost visitations, Sasquatch or alien encounters, are all interconnected through consciousness. I've chosen instead to go the route of sticking to what little I do know about the unique AMM phenomenon, hoping it will be enough to spark more interest and investigations. So who or what is the balloon cult? We, in cooperation with the unknown, are a stretch of the imagination, fetching far to try and grasp a perplexing experience. We are psychonaut detectives, informed by only vague clues to fortify us on our curious quest, but we're compelled as we brave the strange course of this un-UFO journey that has no real end in sight. I think when we step back from this vast landscape, we, who are ardent members of this strange so-called cult, may as well remain humbled by our experiences, knowing that in our present state, we will never likely fully comprehend this phenomenon. Just as we are humbled by the observable universe itself, we make strides to learn more about it while accepting our limitations to grasp its totality. But for sure we know that it's there, and what we don't know yet we don't know yet. That's how I'd frame the creed of the balloon cult, in fellowship for the fantastic journey that continues onward.